This is the Coquette D10. It is one of my favorite sports cars in Grand Theft Auto Online, and it features a very special mechanic going for it that makes it incredibly fast. In today's video, I'll be going over the customization for this car, talking about the price tag, and setting a lap time to see just how fast this vehicle is. You see, the thing about the Coquette is that it has something called advanced handling speed flags. And the way these work is when you drive over little bumps or your vehicle hits any change in terrain, it gets a little bit of a speed boost. And for some reason, the Coquette gets a much bigger speed boost than any other car in the game. We can see just driving down the road, the car is going upwards of 150 miles per hour. In fact, it's literally chilling at 150 right now, 145, then we go back up to 150, 155, 160. The car is almost impossible to drive when you're at the speed as we can see but this is one of the only cars in the game that you can drive down the highway upwards at 160 to 70 miles per hour as long as you're able to control it which is ridiculous so i wanted to put it to the test and see how fast it can perform my lap time but we're going to start off all the way at the beginning by customizing this vehicle the Coquette D10 is available on Legendary Motorsport at the price tag of $1.5 million. This is actually a fairly inexpensive price tag for any sports car, especially one with this level of speed. I just have to figure out which garage I can send my vehicle to. I've got my brand new D10, and honestly, even stock, this is an incredibly sexy vehicle. I am a huge fan of Corvettes, and... I just think that this is such a nice looking vehicle in GTA. So we're going to do the armor upgrades, brakes, all the basic things. We do have some bumper options and obviously I'm going to go for the full splitter kit as I think that looks the best. We also have some diffusers, but going to be honest, they don't really change too much of the overall vehicle's design. All right, upgrade the engine. We got some exhaust choices. There are actually a lot of different designs for the exhaust, which is really cool. You can do a middle one. You can do the side exits. We are going to go for the carbon performance diffuser because that looks so nice. We got some grill options. We can do a carbon with secondary panel. That's probably what I'm gonna go with. You can do carbon housing, not too bad. We got some xenon lights and now livery options. There's a lot of different options for this vehicle when it comes to liveries. I think all of them are kind of cool. Ooh, I actually really like this racing camo one. I haven't done that on many vehicles of mine, so I might do the racing camo. I also kind of like the paint party. This one's also really, really cool, but I think it's a little bit too much for this type of car. Let's just make it classic. How about we do twin black racing stripes, and then we can make this kind of just a normal Corvette color. We can do like a bright yellow, maybe I'm thinking that'll kind of stand out. Yeah, Corvette just looks so good with any type of yellow. However, fun fact, classic paints do not fade when it comes to liveries and uh, colors behind them. So what we're actually going to do, ooh, that, that looks really nice there too. I'm going to go with, I'm actually just going to do the basic yellow. I think that looks really nice on this vehicle. We do have secondary color options. We can see that's in the front here. Ooh, that looks so cool. Okay, we're going to go with the white. Oh yeah, I actually really, really like that. Okay, that's, that's pretty sick. We got some roof designs that we can do. Ooh, I'm going to go for the secondary roof. I really like that as well. All right, we got some roof scoop options, and they're pretty basic for the most part. How about we do a secondary tuner vent? We got some skirts, and you'll notice that there is a lot of customization when it comes to this car, even spoiler options. There's a lot of different unique designs. I personally really like that, and I think it gives this car a lot of life, which is obviously pretty not normal when it comes to some of the older cars. So I, I do really like what Rockstar's done with this vehicle. Do a sun strip, lower that suspension, put on the transmission turbo. We're gonna do wheel types, and uh, we'll just do my favorite type of rims. There you go. And so far, the vehicle's basically done in terms of customization. But there's obviously a lot of different ways you can kit out this vehicle. I mean, this looks completely different to my other personal Coquette. Because of that, I think it looks really, really epic. I like the way the spoiler overhangs on the back. It's just such a clean looking car. Just in case you don't trust the digital speedometer inside of this vehicle, as we can see, I have set up an external speedometer so we can get an exact idea of how fast this car is driving while also also not having to go in first person. But as we can see, the digital speedo and external speedo are going the exact same speed. A lot of people don't realize this, but the internal speedometer of a vehicle is exactly the same as long as it's digital. If it's one of the uh, little analog ones, it's not going to be correct. But look
Look at our speed. We're chilling at 137, 140 miles per hour right now. This is a normal sports car. It's not HSW, this is normal. And the base top speed is only 127. And yet we are chilling currently over 130, going upwards of 140. Now, obviously around corners, you're gonna have to slow down. But the fact that this vehicle is able to get up to these ridiculous top speeds shows just how insane this glitch is. And again, you don't have to do anything. You easily could get out the exact same car I have, customize it in any way you want, and you will get out the exact same results. Look at this, just on the bridge alone, 138. I mean, it's kind of insane what you're able to do in this car and the speeds you're able to achieve. The only problem with the Coquette is that it doesn't have the best handling. But I wonder if the handling is going to be excused for the ridiculous amount of speed this car has. I mean, look at it right now. 155. 100, I mean, 150 miles per hour is insane. Can we break 160? We're close, but no, we're not able to break 160 just yet. But still, that is kind of insane, the fact that we're literally just chilling at 150 miles per hour right now on flat ground. I'm actually really excited to see how this vehicle does on the lap time, because while it does have that ridiculous top speed on highways, it might not be that clear cut and dry when it comes to overall cornering and handling. This vehicle kind of feels like you're driving on ice a lot of the time, but it's fast, so I'm interested to see how it does. Well, let's see what this car can do. Full speed ahead. Personally, I think we can get a pretty respectable lap time, but it's going to depend on how this car handles today. So let's go in between these two vehicles. Nice. We're already going 140 again. It's just the speed that this vehicle can achieve is actually insane. All right, here we go. Nice. Now we got to roll around this corner here. I'm going to slow down a bit so we don't need to worry about tire spin. Wheel spin is the big problem you're going to encounter with this car. If you take corners too tight or you give the car too much power while trying to make the corner, you're going to run into some big, big problems. But so far, we're off to a pretty good start. We do have a vehicle in front of us, but hopefully we can roll around you. Oh, you can see there, almost just spun out again. The, the handling on this vehicle is the major problem, but not bad, not bad. Okay, hug this corner, hug this corner. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, no vehicles are in front of me. We do have one that is just rounding the corner, but that's A-OK. -okay. Squeeze past you, nice, okay. All right, had to apply the brakes there just so we wouldn't get too much air, and we have made it to the downhill portion. This is where handling is important because we can achieve a lot of speed on the downhill portion. That's obviously easy, but it's controlling the speed and being able to not spin your tires that is really, really important, and that's going to make or break your lap time. So right now, I'm really focusing on conserving our speed through these corners. I am definitely using a lot of brain power to do this, but if we can do it well, it's still gonna prove that this is a fairly solid car on the lap time area. Oh man, but every corner I am fighting against this car. It's got a mind of its own. All right, well, we've made it to the straights here. And as long as we don't make a rookie mistake, we should be pretty good. All righty, let's, uh, let's hug this corner tight. Nice. Oh, a little bit of grip lossage, but nothing that I can't handle. All right, all right, all right. Let's just hug this and please don't turn into me. Nice. How fast are we going right now? 140. Again, when this car is able to cook, it cooks hard. Okay, here we go. Slow down a little bit. Okay, look, uh, took that a little wide, but that's done. Wow, that is an insanely fast lap time. Two minutes and 21 seconds. To put into your mind how fast that is, the Turismo Amagio and Emirates are the two fastest lap time cars on PC for Grand Theft Auto. And both of those vehicles were able to achieve lap times that were around two minutes and 19 seconds on that course you just saw. And I was able to get two minutes and 21 seconds in a sports car, which has way worse handling and is supposed to be slower than the Emirates on its top speed. But clearly that is not the case. You can see just driving on this flat road right here, we are going 150 miles per hour. It's insane how fast this car is. I would highly recommend for the price of $1.5 million that any player who wants a ridiculously fast sports car picks up the Coquette D10. It is a super underrated vehicle. I've made videos on this car in the past and just seems that people don't want a ridiculously fast underrated car. 
Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.